we all know Dwayne The Rock Johnson is the king of the cheat day. You would have seen him on Instagram eating his 25 glazed donuts with, I don't know, 55 hot dogs washed down by a ginormous Slurpee, whatever he does. I sometimes think that like he, the glee that that man has in his eyes when he's getting stuck into his cheat meals, uh, it, it is pretty fucking contagious and inspiring. And it, I sometimes wonder like, has he created like more health issues than, than promoted positive uh, habits, healthy habits? Because, you know, like sometimes I look at his fucking cheat meals on IG and I'm like, yeah, you know what? I did half-heartedly walk for 15 minutes twice this week. I should have a fucking triple upsized McDonald's meal and yeah, get some fucking Wendy's on the home. Why not? I deserve it because I'm a bad bitch. Like what? <laughs> Versus because, and then you see him in the gym and he's fucking roided up to the, to his Samoan tits and he's fucking throwing things around like the Hulk and you're doing you're walking around like a pigeon in your back garden being like yeah we basically burnt the same calories so let's cheat it up bitch i don't think that's the way it works uh but it seems like a cheat day is is a popular thing now in this image obsessed world that we live in myself included i'm fucking glancing at the mirror a few times a day Plotting, scheming, measuring, analyzing, rating, figuring out what could be done differently, what could be done better. And some people incorporate a cheat meal or a cheat day or cheat day rather into their schedule as a way to kind of boost uh the their entire productivity to feed the beast. If you work hard, you need a reward. As the modern day philosopher Jerry Seinfeld says, if you sit down, give yourself a cookie. If you do the work, you need to reward yourself. And um, I think that works, but I'm going to propose something fucking insane here. Why don't you go? Why don't you roll with a cheat decade? Why not fucking be, be everything you want to be without shame for 10 fucking years. I recall this instance where I went to, I went on a European vacation. I went to Italy first and then I went over to Greece and it was towards the end of the holiday. I was there for about three weeks in total. And I'd been smoking cigarettes, drinking, eating heavy food. And towards the end, I felt like my blood thickening. And uh, I think me walking around, average Tommy doesn't look very Greek. But again, I was doing the mirror thing and being like, dude, you're starting to look more Greek. And I felt myself kind of like warping and shaping, kind of turning into a little bit of a, a Grecian monster. And... I liked it. I, I liked the thickening of the blood. I was like, oh, holy fuck. I'm, I'm going through some type of weird transformation here. And um, I don't know if anyone's experienced this. I think that like everyone understands the feeling of being hung over, being a weekend warrior uh, when you're a young person and you work hard during the week. You fucking go nuts on the weekend and you have t horrific hangovers, but you've got plans and you only have a X amount of time to ingest drink and drugs. So you just get on with it on the weekends and your body goes through a big fucking uh, change going from like sober and getting good sleep during the week working hard on a schedule to like just absolute debauchery. And it's a big fucking binary difference 
when you're on vacation, you start to fucking roll with the punches. You become a bit of a road dog. Yeah. You become, you get like roadie. T- you toughen up because you just put, po- you're slowly poisoning yourself. And it's kind of like this strange acceptance of being like, all right, this is who I'm, this is who I want to be. And I think a lot of people don't really allow themselves to be in that mode for that long. It is kind of fucking fun. And if you're going to understand your personal poisons, you got to spend a bit of time with them. I think some are worse for you than others. Uh, Some are to be avoided entirely, but the things you like to cheat with, give yourself fucking 10 years. I'm, I'm, telling you 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 won't regret it (laughs) fuck it out i'm gonna get i'm gonna get slandered i'm gonna get sued for this podcast uh but yeah i don't know this only works if you're young by the way i think um and you don't have too many responsibilities and perhaps not a serious job (laughs) so maybe there's some of you out there who fit within this slim demographic but yeah allow yourself to become the monster at the end of the decade, the things that you're like, oh, they, I really like that shit, but um, I've had 10 years of it nonstop. By that point, you've really fucking given it a good caning and you're like, I'm ready to hang up my boots when it comes to fucking glazed donuts or, or whatever the, whatever the, the shiny precious object you're chasing is. As opposed to the people who keep the devil lingering in their house, being like, Sunday's 2 p.m., I'm going full Dwayne The Rock Johnson and getting stuck in. It's basically just being like, hey, Lucifer, come come live with me. And not even really understanding who he is. Being like, that mysterious fucker keeps trying to bend me over and fuck me in the ass, unlubricated, raw, with his red devilish penis <laughs> as opposed to if you've been around fucking old Lu- lucy babes for 10 years do you remember that time in santorini we got really fucked up like you he becomes the devil becomes your buddy if you spend a lot of time with him and you know his tricks and you're like yeah fucking hell dude i'm sick of you and you're sick of me time to fucking live apart for a little while cheat decade something to consider as opposed to this bullshit once a week thing, really cheat it up, learn what you actually like a lot and let it try and kill you. If it kills you, maybe you will have had some interesting things happen to you during the decade. If it doesn't, you'll be ready to turn over and you lease a life and you won't look like uh, the rock who looks like a fucking uh, a kid who's just got a, a happy meal every Sunday at 2 p.m. This is all bad advice. Don't listen to any of it, but fun to talk shit. All right, catch you on the next one.